Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Glad Sapursky. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And I'm here with Erin McDonald, the CEO of en Environments, which focuses on addressing lightning, but she she'll tell us the details. But before getting into the details of what she does, she has a really interesting story to tell us about transitioning to remote work and the metaverse. So the first question I want to ask you, Erin, is what made you decide to deploy the metaverse as a technique to address remote work challenges in your company? Thank, thank you. I had a there was a there were a number of things that kind of pushed me into that direction. I saw um, I was observing my children during the pandemic, and mm -hmm. they were very engaged in their three D environments, but they were not engaged in Zoom. And I started to ask why because <laughs> I was feeling the same way. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I so I went into Roblox with them to see if I was engaged, and I became engaged in those environments mm -hmm. too. Um, and in return, I started thinking about the fact that I could not see my team and had a desire to restore the sight of mm. being able to see them. I was that was that was the most sensory that I was desperate to have to have the 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 two d environments did not translate mm. to me. Um, so I started thinking about the metaverse as an option for our business. We also had a hard time selling digitally. And I needed to mm. restore a way to sell digitally. So, okay. So that was about seeing and having many more senses engaged. That's what I'm hearing you talking that's, about. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating that you followed your kids into Roblox. So, how did you decide to do that? You just decided that they were checking out Roblox. You decided to see what it would be like for you. Yeah. And I also noticed that the value of their digital, the value they place on a digital interaction, social, a social digital interaction mm -hmm. was different than that of an older person. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's somebody of a older generation um, thinks about a digital interaction, they, they almost devalue it as if um, it didn't have as much meaning because it happened digitally where in a younger, the younger environments, they, they didn't seem to know the younger generations didn't seem to notice mm -hmm. the difference. Um, and so I thought that's definitely the direction we're going mm -hmm. and it's a more humane user interface than the previous user interfaces that we've worked with before. And is that what your, what did your employees find when you started making the screen transition? So you said your kids mm -hmm. value the digital interaction much more. Mm -hmm. Adults who your employees happen to be tend to value it less. How did they start engaging with it? It was uh, uh, if the if the employee was a digital native, they were mm -hmm. open to the possibility. If they were not a digital native, we um, had to get creative to mm. get different ways to get them to engage in the metaverse. Um, so uh, that you know, you can we have a digital twin of our office. So we have the psychological association, digital twin or office both the same in, in, in collaboration and interaction. And the older generations felt less comfortable with that mm. interaction. And so we started to build in sales tools for them to use in the metaverse and they became more open to it. So meeting them at a different place and level was, um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of walking them into it slowly has been uh, uh, really important in the onboarding of this digital transformation for us. <laughs> <laughs> And so it sounds like you did some investments into this, into the back end, into the technology. Tell me a little bit more about the investments that you made. What kind of investments were they? What did you build out? Um, well, we uh, I own a, a lighting company. I own mm -hmm. an IoT integration company, and we own a software company. And we did uh, our specialty was it were in, was intelligent buildings um, mm -hmm. prior to this, and so. We were always interested in a 3D interface. Um, so we took our 3D uh, digital twin and we put it in a gaming environment and we put people in it. Um, we hired programmers. Um, so we have our own programmers to do this. Um, and uh, we have people 
that can employ these digital buildings um, as part of our regular business. So it just seemed like a perfect extension to what we already did. So let's get a little bit more into your background so that we understand how you came to this place. You came here with certain tools. You have three companies. Tell me a little bit more about your background as an entrepreneur, as a founder, how you came to this place. Yeah, I my father was an architect. Um, I was an interior designer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I became interested in lighting because uh, it was more technical in nature. And uh, I, you know, I sold lighting for 20 years um, mm -hmm. as I um, went through my career and moved up the ladder and eventually became an owner of a company. Um, and then we scaled that company horizontally and now we're working on mm -hmm. a vertical scaling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, okay. Go ahead. Yep. So how did your experience building out the companies to coming to the place where you are inform the transition that you're making right now in your company to the metaverse, what you call the workplace of the future? I'm sorry, the part of it cut out. Could you repeat that question? Sorry. Sure. So how did your experience getting to the stage where you are, kind of from your background, rising up in your career, how did that inform your transformation that you're putting in right now in your free companies to what you call the workplace of the future, that experience that you had in the past? I think, well, I think it goes down to um, the way I view the world from a spatial intelligence perspective. Um, and I think that's applied in, hmm. you know, running, running businesses, but I think it can also be applied in how we communicate and how um, we interface with our, our, our digital environments. So I, I think I'm always thinking spatially. And I think that's the hmm. one common denominator that, that obviously I'm, very motivated and feel like I, we have as a company some skills to offer the world um, uh, to be able to put these things together. Um, and we were kind of watching the market to see if anyone was going to do it. We thought, well, we, we know how to do it. We know how to work mm -hmm. in these 3D interfaces. We do it for building controls all the time. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of putting people in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we set out to do, yeah. And what kind of ROI, the return on investment, are you discovering now that you're building out and getting your team to collaborate in the metaverse context? We're able to uh, capture the return on investment in a number of different ways, and I find mm -hmm. it to be very similar in the way that real estate captures their investment. The first mm -hmm. one is um, through our building controls, we're able to make more spatially um, uh, uh, data-driven decisions. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, for instance, to give you an example, uh, we were looking at... Um, the usage of our um, our space in the back where we hold all our samples. Um, and I noticed that there were several rows that hadn't been visited in a year. And we found that through our building controls, uh, through mm -hmm. our 3D interface. Um, and I realized that those samples hadn't been brought out. Therefore, we're not really selling those particular lines of lighting. So we're making better decisions and, and mm -hmm. actionable insights through that. Um, we think that it increases the value of our business because we're attracting, mm -hmm. um, you know, more partners to come and work and more clients uh, to work with us. Um, we see a, a big marketing um, advantage in it, um, in a sense that we can create experiences for our clients um, to be able to experience in our lighting business those lights so we created a park and we have outdoor all of our outdoor lights in this park and you can experience them and walk through this park oh, with the avatar cool. and learn mm -hmm. about the lights and experience what it's like with the light on or with the sun mm -hmm. out or with the sun um, down so that's been interesting and even creating games within those parks so that you can kind of create more memory um tagging um when you're having these marketing experiences with their clients and um you know the the difference is all of a sudden you can hear the birds and your feet crunching underneath hmm. 
when you walk and those things add um, to the experience. And I think it's, I think it's often overlooked. Um, mm. uh, yeah. And I, and I think that it, the, that it really helps us from um, the touch points or the collaboration points. It's very convenient to walk up to somebody in the metaverse when you're just kind of hanging out um, and ask a quick question. Um, and I dream of someday being able to get rid of my email inbox uh, because <laughs> <laughs> it can be a little intimidating at times. Sure. But um, to think about rather than having an email inbox with people literally walking up to you in the metaverse and asking questions real time, mm -hmm. um, it makes it uh, so much more convenient. And um, mm -hmm. it doesn't recapture all of the collaboration points pre-pandemic of having people in the office but it's better than the standard hybrid model we're working in now. Much better. Mm -hmm. So you talked a lot, quite a bit about clients earlier. You mentioned sales for your more less digitally native staff. Tell me a little bit more about how this impacts more specifically the sales dynamics for you. Yes. Yeah, well, we're really excited about emotional tagging. Um, so mm -hmm. this is, you know, just being able to just give those experiences. We sell lights and in, in my main mm -hmm. business or building controls and to be able to have this experiential sales, we're up against a lot of other people in our marketplace that sell similar lights to us. So anything to get the client to help us to remember or to help them to mm. remember us when they're thinking about lights um, is really important. So we're, um, Pretty, it, but that it also plays into our building controls um, portion mm -hmm. of our business because we've connected our building controls to that metaverse and we're illustrating what's happening to those controls in the metaverse too. So there's a lot of connection. What's interesting about what happens when you put a digital twin into the metaverse is that every um, Every department on your PL sheet wants a piece of the metaverse for one mm -hmm. reason or another, whether it's HR and sales and marketing. They all want customer service in our, they want a customer service counter to be able to be available to their clients uh, uh, immediately and then create a memorable experience at the same time. It's been um, it's been a great journey mm. to developing this with them and my team. That's Mm -hmm. How do you think it impacted your retention and recruitment? Well, uh, I I think I think it impacted it in a very positive way. Um, we haven't uh, our turnover has been very low. It's three percent. Mm. Uh, oh, that's so, great. Yeah, so we're excited about that, and um, I am also excited about the fact that I don't have any intention of not having a hybrid workplace. Um, we, in 2020, we decided that uh, the world was here and was go going to stay the way in, in a similar way that it was. And then we started planning for a hybrid workplace then. Um, so this is sort of the culmination of what this has become. Um, so mm -hmm. if uh, we were really excited to be able to be home with our families and to integrate mm -hmm. work in this different way in our lives. So we plan to stay that way. And I'm happy to take all the employees and programmers that are forced to go back to the office <laughs> and don't want to stay with their other employers. Yeah, it's, um, it, I, I think it'll definitely give us competitive advantage. Yeah, that's my, what my clients are finding from helping transition to the future of work with hybrid work, that giving flexibility, allowing some employees at least to work fully remotely Others who want to, who do well to work fully remotely, who do well to come in you know, a day a week or something like that, that definitely helps retention and re recruitment. So that's definitely important. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to figure out new systems and processes to collaborate effectively together. Tell me a little bit more. And then my clients have been working on that and I've been helping them out. I'm curious what you're doing with your innovative approach to the metaverse. How are you changing your systems and processes to account for this transition? Um, well, we're uh, we're trying to create more rituals in our in mm. our weeks. So I think ritual is a big part of a success in a remote hybrid workplace. So mm. coffee um, catch ups in the metaverse. I think the element of play and joy 
come, mm. they come they, they, it's a really important part of this. Um, and it was actually uh, a surprise to me um, how much play and joy were, um, were, were a part of this, the, the metaverse workplace. So we're now incorporating um, HR function into it in a sense that we can celebrate employees through the metaverse mm -hmm. and um, acknowledge the fact that they've had a certain number of years with the company, um, let people know, especially the newer people, that there are mentors available to them. Oh. And then we have um, set collaboration hours. Um, and that's, I don't imagine that to be a, a policy forever. Um, but as we're all getting used to this new platform mm -hmm. and getting more comfortable with the new policies and procedures, um, we need to have set hours. So we have set collaboration hours between inter interdepartmentally in, within our company um, throughout the week. Yeah, that makes sense. And my, I certainly advise my clients to have kind of a set collaboration hours when they can rely on others to quickly answer Slack messages or something like that. Mm -hmm. So talking about Slack messages, to what extent are you using other collaboration platforms besides the metaverse? And how are they integrating? Well, if you I are using Sure, we've integrated Teams, uh, Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, into our metaverse. Um, so, but I think that there's still a, a place um, right now when we're as we're developing the technology for Zoom and Slack and Teams and HubSpot and all of the things that we're using. So we we still have other collaboration tools. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're just tying them all into the same place in stack software. So we have a hub to our metaverse um, and it has a community section. It looks like it, an internal Facebook, if you will, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so we can post on it, but it also has uh, a place for you to book desk, desks in the physical universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, tells you what the air quality is and the temperature and all mm. of the things are in the physical universe, showing that the physical universe is uh, tidy, everything is uh, well. And if you desire to collaborate in person, you can mm. find the days that the people you would like to collaborate with will be in the office and book your desk. So um, so we've created the slot. Slack the stack software to kind of accommodate all of these things and be a central core um, around the business. I felt during the pandemic with all the distributed um, uh, collaboration systems, it confused people and we needed to consolidate mm. and have the central core to our digital um, environment. Yeah, that's definitely important. I strongly recommend my clients set very clear expectations about which tools to use and how to use them. Because mm -hmm. I find also that there's etiquette challenges around, well, how quickly do you answer Slack messages? What about emails? What about, you know, Microsoft Teams messages or Trello notifications? How do you establish an etiquette for the metaverse? What is your technique for doing that? What are the etiquettes for the metaverse in your company? We're still learning too. Mm -hmm. um, we've built in a lot of um, etiquette already. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, we we use voice um, to mm -hmm. to communicate. So through the metaverse, people can use messaging if they like or um, other versions. But uh, we we prefer to use voice. Um, and uh, as far as etiquette is concerned, it really is about. Uh, anything that you would do in the physical universe, we've applied to the metaverse. So if okay. you, if HR would be upset <laughs> in the physical universe, they would, they would probably uh, apply the same rules in the in the metaverse. Um, although we're still early on, and to be very honest with that, is it, it, the um, with the lawyers and uh, human resources about what can and cannot be said in the metaverse. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that was important to us is that um, although this is the central core of our software um, hub or digital hub in our um, environment, that the people, um, the avatars do not mm -hmm. have any personally identifiable information. 
Um, okay. And that was most, that was pretty important to our lawyers that, that, that it be built that way, but it's mm -hmm. also really important to the employees that it's built that way mm -hmm. so that your performance in the metaverse, A, is not being recorded, um, B, is not being analyzed in any way, and, and C, can't be held against you in, in another job mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was a big concern. So we, we definitely okay. have that disconnect between the personally identifiable information. What other concerns were raised? So besides this personally identifiable information that you didn't expect at first or that you think it would be valuable for other folks to know about? I guess most people were concerned about being tracked. Um, hmm. but once, uh, once we assured them that there was no personally identifiable information, there was a lot less hesitation, um, okay. to come in the metaverse. Um, and my business does things like heat mapping. Um, this is pretty interesting, slightly off of our thing, but it, we, we can heat map people and should see where in the office they're communing in the physical universe. And we can do the same um, in the metaverse. You can heat map so you can kind of find your collaboration <laughs> points within the office. And um, it's, 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 it's valuable information, um, both in the physical and um, metaverse situation. But I, it is something that, you know, where we're tracking anonymously. So I don't know what yes person has been in that spot. I just know a person has been in that spot. How do you find the metaverse impacts team bonding? Um, I, I think that, well, first of all, the element of joy and play um, tend to um, lower boundaries. Mm. Um, and I think that in the past, especially during the pandemic, people came to video calls with a lot of boundaries. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and not knowing really what to expect. And so um, it, there is that element that um, lowers those and, and sort of opens people up to um, more ideation. Um, I think it um, enhances creativity um, because you're making, you're in this spatial environment um, it allows for you to have more or be in tune with your spatial awareness. Therefore, mm. you're able to sort of build ideas better. Um, I found that for me, I can't apply that to all of the employees, but I can't imagine that I'm much different. So um, I found that that was really interesting in the convenience mm -hmm. of being able to have access to your team members. Um, I, I never felt comfortable clicking on a team's icon to call someone that I didn't normally call as a CEO of my company. It was only because mm. uh, I didn't know if they were away picking up their kids. We have a very um, open workplace. You know, we take care of our uh, day, you know, our personal along with our professional um, as long as we're getting our work done. And so we have this open environment and um, I, I couldn't tell if people were available or not. Sometimes the green lights on, sometimes the red lights on, but I can't see behind the button. Um, sure. Having people physically, you can, we're not physically, but virtually, you can virtually see them a person. Um, mm -hmm. It makes them much more accessible. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that. Mm -hmm. Now, more broadly, how do you think this metaverse experimental transformation will impact your company's brand and how people see you? I, I think they'll see us as more technologically advanced and innovative mm. in a sense, because we're the first uh, lighting and building controls company to, to go into the metaverse. So I think that definitely gives us advantage. Um, it shows that we're invested in our company. So I, I, I think just... Mm. I, from the perspective of the people that are hiring us, um, th they see that we're, you know, curious intellectuals that are trying to make a difference in the world. This 
this thing was a, mostly inspired by my daughter who has an autoimmune disease and is um, can't reach the outside world uh, because she has to be home uh, due to mm. her physical condition. So, um, and uh, it's really interesting. Her doctor, who is a, what a, like a, a he was a neurogastroenterologist, said that the 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 children that he deals with very much like her with dysautonomia um, have really high IQs. And, um, and I thought what a shame that they couldn't reach the workplace. Um, Cause what, what a, what an advantage to have um, people like this in, a, in our workplaces, this diversity, this different thought, the different mm -hmm. way of thinking. And so um, I was inspired to, create this from that story so that's a very powerful story thank you for sharing that thank you are there any other last questions you wish to share anything i haven't asked you that you think our listeners would like to know um no i just think that well i think that they're you know having a psychological association um with your workplace in a digital environment can be very advantageous to your business mm. and and it and it creates mission driven employees it reminds them of the mission every day when they walk in those virtual doors so um it's not the uh, it's not the utopia that uh, is described in the movies. It's a fa <laughs> fabulous 3D user interface that we should be looking at to replace our 2D interfaces. Excellent. Thank you, Erin. And can you tell us a little bit more about where folks can learn more about you online, any sites that you wish to give, any recommendations? Great. Um, our our website is uh, www.environments.tech. Um, the name of our app is Elevated Environments. And um, please give us a call. And my name is Erin McDonald. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erin. And thank you to the listeners and the viewers of this show. Again, this is the Wise Decision Maker Show. My name is Dr. Glad Sapursky, the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, which is a future work consultancy that sponsors the show. Please leave a review on Apple iTunes or wherever else you discovered the show. Leave a comment on YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the show. That'll help other folks discover the show and help you make sure that you keep in touch with all the latest episodes. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. In the meantime, the wisest, the most profitable decisions to you, my friends.